Greetings, beloved. I'm Chelsea Barrett. Welcome to the Wednesday Word. The word of the Lord to you today is remove the poverty mentality. If you were with us on Sunday, the word of the Lord then was prepare. The Lord wants to prepare you in this season for your next breakthrough, for that next level that the Lord has for you. The Lord specifically said that he wants you to come to him directly for the details and for further instruction. The Lord is a speaking God. God wants to speak to everyone. If you are a born again believer, it is your birthright to hear from God directly. John 10, 27 says, my sheep hear my voice. That means if you are a born again believer, Jesus is talking to you. You just have to be able to get yourself in position where you can hear from him yourself. God uses me and this ministry as a tool, as a resource to help you to hear his voice. Our mission statement here at Freedom's Calling Ministries is simply helping you hear the voice of God so you can maximize his promises. So in this word today, God is going to share some details with you, but your responsibility every time you come to this or any other program is to take what you've heard and take it directly to God and say to God, Lord, I would like to discuss with you what I heard. Is this for me? And if so, what do you want me to do about it? So that the Lord can begin to speak to you directly. I challenge you to do that even when you go to your Sunday services or whenever you go to church, I challenge you to take the word of God that's been given to you and take it directly to God yourself and ask God, Lord, what are you saying to me regarding this message of what do you want me to do with it? And God will start speaking to you. We're gonna be talking about more of that in the coming weeks because our true mission again here is to help you hear the voice of God, helping you hear the voice of God so that you can maximize his promises. Amen. So this week, the word of the Lord to you is, um, is to remove. He wants you to completely remove from your life, the poverty mentality. And that's a way that God is positioning you. That's a way that he is preparing you for this breakthrough in this season. The Lord started speaking to me through the book of Esther, specifically Esther one, um, verses one through eight. And as I read those verses, I didn't quite get it at first. <laughs> I just heard the Lord say, go back and read it, go back and read it, go back and read it again. And as I read over those verses over and over and over again, the Lord started speaking to me about what he was saying and what he wants me to bring forth this Wednesday. I wanna let you know that the first way God ever started speaking to me years ago was through the Bible. I want to encourage you to start reading the Bible from a relationship standpoint because God will speak to you through the Bible. You don't need a prophet, you don't need a priest, you don't need a pastor, just you and God, you and Jesus, you and the Holy Spirit there with the Bible, he will speak to you. So start reading with the Lord present. Don't read just to read from a knowledge standpoint, but read the Bible from a relationship standpoint. When you start reading, say, God, speak to me today. Let me hear what you want me to hear. Let me see what you want me to see and let me do with it what you want me to. God will speak to you directly if you start making this your daily practice. Amen. So let's dive into the word today that God gave me. This is from the book of Esther 1 and we're going to read verses 1 through 8. Now I would like to ask you as I begin reading here to really listen intently but also listen from your imagination standpoint. I want you to see the words. As I'm reading the words, start seeing the action that's being played out, okay? And I'm going to tell you why um, once we get through this. So again, this is Esther 1, starting from verse 1 through verse 8. Um, okay, yes, Lord. So before I even start this, let me just go back and, and summarize the book of Esther for you. For those of you who are not familiar with the book of Esther, I love this book. I encourage you to go through it yourself, hear what God is saying, but also just embody yourself in, in this story. It's, it's so rich. But basically, the book of Esther is about um, this really rich king. His name is Xerxes, and he's rich, he's powerful, he's over 127 providences, so a lot of land and area. He's ruling over this land and area. And this man is so rich that he throws this banquet to show off his riches to all the people in the area, from the least to the greatest. And the banquet goes on for 100 and I believe it's 180 days, and he throws another celebration for seven days. And during this time, he calls in his queen, her name is Vashti, to come and show off her beauty because she's so beautiful. 
Well, Vashti the queen decides that she's not going to go. She disobeys the king and does not go at his command. So the king, I'm sure being a man, he had his ego bruised. So he calls for his advisors, the wise men, to advise him about what he should do. And these advisors say to the king, you know, king, you can't have this because if you don't do something about Vashti's behavior, then all the women in the providences, they're going to think that it's okay to disrespect their husbands. They're going to think that it's okay to be disobedient. So the wise men advise the, um, the king to put away Vashti so that she's no longer queen anymore. But on top of that, the wise men advise the king to hold a beauty contest of virgins, pretty virgins, and then pick one who's going to replace Vashti on the throne as his queen. So there is a peasant girl, we would refer to her in those days as a peasant girl, um, Esther. She's from the tribe of Benjamin. She is of Jewish lineage. She enters this beauty contest, not by choice, it's not her choice, but she enters this beauty contest and she wins the favor of everyone who sees her and she ends up winning the favor of the king as well and becoming queen on the throne. She ends up saving her people, the Jewish people, from annihilation. So that's really the, the real meaning of the story is how God uses her through favor to save her people from being annihilated. And there are many other wonderful details in there, but the Lord really wanted me to summarize that for you before we start or he wants me to, um, to put a focus on. So I'm going to read here from Esther 1, verse 1 through 8, and really imagine, see as I'm reading, see the words like in your mind, see the pictures, see everything being played out as I read, beginning here now at verse 1. This is what happened during the time of Xerxes. The Xerxes who ruled over 127 provinces, stretching from India to Kush, at that time, King Xerxes reigned from his royal throne in the citadel of Susa. In the third year of his reign, he gave a banquet for all his nobles and officials. The military leaders of Persia and Media, the princes and the nobles of the providences were present. For a full 180 days, imagine that, for a full 180 days, he displayed the vast wealth of his kingdom and the splendor and glory of his majesty. When these days were over, the king gave a banquet lasting seven days in the enclosed gardens of the king's palace for all the people from the least to the greatest who were in the citadel of Susa. The garden, now listen carefully, the garden had hangings of white and blue linen fastened with cords of white linen and purple material um, to silver rings on marble pillars. There were couches of gold and silver on mosaic pavement of porphyry, marble, mother of pearl, and other royal um, stones. Wine was served and listen, wine was served in goblets of gold, each one different from the other, and the royal wine was abundant in keeping with the king's liberality. By the king's command, each guest was allowed to drink with no restrictions, for the king instructed all the wine stewards to serve each man what he wished. I want you to hear that again. So I'm going to read it again. Start seeing the wealth. Start seeing the luxury in this. Start seeing the gold goblets in your mind here as I read. This is what happened during the time of Xerxes, the Xerxes who ruled over 127 providences stretching from India to Kush. At the time, King Xerxes reigned from his royal throne in the citadel of Susa, and in the third year of his reign, he gave a banquet for all his nobles and officials. So imagine this big banquet for all the nobles and officials in this big providence, 127 providences. The military leaders of Persia and Media, the princes and the nobles of the providences were present. So this would be like the president of the United States throwing a big bash but even on a larger scale, because even though our country here is really big, it's not 127 providences. So it would be like the king of the world back then, just throwing this big bash for all of his nobles and his officials. And this went on for a full 140, 180 days, it says. For a full 180 days, he displayed the vast wealth of his kingdom and the splendor and glory of his majesty. When these days were over, the king gave a banquet lasting seven days in the enclosed garden of the king's palace for all the people from the least to the greatest who were in the citadel of Susa. Here we go. See this in your mind. The garden had hangings of white and blue linen fastened with cords of white linen and purple material to silver rings on marble pillars. There were couches of gold and silver on mosaic pavements of porphyry, marble, mother of pearl, and other costly stones. 
Wine was served in goblets of gold, each one different from the other. And the royal wine was abundant in keeping with the king's liberality. By the king's command, each guest was allowed to drink with no restrictions. So no restrictions at the bar. <laughs> For the king instructed all the wine stewards to serve each man what he wished. I hope you really got a picture in your mind of what the scripture is saying here. This was a big deal. This wasn't just a nice party. This was a royal party with goblets of gold, with couches made out of gold and silver, with the finest wine, with the finest type of stones that were around. This was a royal gathering. As I began to read this over and over again, the Lord started speaking to me. He first spoke to me to tell me, go back and read this again. I read it the first time. I thought, okay, Lord, I don't really understand what you're saying here. And the Lord said to me, go back and read it again. So I went back and read it again. I'm like, okay, well, this is good. Go back and read it again. So I went back and I read it again. And I started hearing more. The Lord started speaking to me more about what he was saying. And I just want to say right here before we move on, one of the first ways that the Lord ever spoke to me was through the Word of God. That was where He really began to start teaching me the sound of His voice and started downloading into me information for my life. I want to encourage you to start reading the Bible every day if you don't already. It doesn't have to be 10 chapters. You read what the Lord tells you to. But start reading from a place of relationship versus just reading for our knowledge. When you read, before you start, speak to the Lord and ask God, Lord, reveal to me yourself. Jesus, let me see you in this Bible. Lord, speak to me. Tell me what you want me to hear, Lord. Speak to me, please. As you begin to do that on a consistent basis, the Lord will start speaking to you. The Lord wants to speak to you personally and directly. So as you start doing that, I admonish you to, even when you go to church on Sundays or whatever service you go to church on, take that service and bring it back to the Lord. Take it before God and say, okay, God, tell me about this. What are you saying to me? What were you saying to me through the scriptures that the pastor read? What do you want me to do with this? And you'll start to develop that relationship with the Lord and the Lord will speak to you. He's speaking to you now. He'll speak to you in a way that you can truly identify and understand for yourself as an individual. Amen. But going back to the word that the Lord shared uh, with me to share on this program, the word is that the Lord wants you to remove your poverty mindset to prepare yourself for this next season that you're entering, this open door that you're right on the cusp of. This is a part of the preparation process. I said, okay, Lord, poverty mentality, like Book of Esther, like what are you saying here? You need to speak to me more. And as I'm saying this, I just wanna encourage you, as you start to hear the voice of the Lord, he may initially speak some things to you that's not clear. You need to ask questions, keep asking questions. Okay, Jesus, okay, Holy Spirit, okay, Lord, I don't understand this. Can you speak a little bit more to me? Can you tell me a little bit more about this? Well, I didn't get it when the Lord spoke it to me initially, so I had to keep asking, okay, God, and he kept saying, go back and reread, go back and reread. And I did, and initially I still didn't make that connection. But as I went back and reread and kept asking the Lord questions, what the Lord eventually spoke to me was that this peasant girl, Esther, she was from the least tribe, one of the least tribes of Israel, the tribe of Benjamin. Before she actually went to the palace, all of this stuff, all of this richness, it was already there. Even though she was a peasant girl from the tribe of Benjamin, from one of the least tribes of Israel, all of these riches, the gold couches, the silver couches, the goblets of gold, all the fine stones, all the fine wine, it was already in that place for her. It was already there in the end before she even saw it, before she even knew it. So from there, the Lord began to speak to me about removing the mindset of poverty. And even in that, the Lord is not specifically talking just about money. He's talking about poverty from the standpoint of lack. Anything that's less than, anything where there is lack, that is poverty. And the Lord is saying to you today that these things are already there. They're already prepared for you. 
the things that he's bringing you to, they're already there. So you have to remove the mindset of poverty from you today. You have to remove those thoughts of not being good enough, not having enough, not being enough. God says to remove that from your mindset today because everything that I have prepared for you, it's already there. So you have to get a picture on your mind. You have to get a picture on your soul. You have to get a picture in your spirit. You have to get a picture deep down and see that you are not in poverty because the Lord himself has already prepared you for this place that you're going to. So you have to start to think it. You have to start to speak it. You have to start to be it. Remove the mindset of poverty. That is a part of your preparation for this next season that we're entering. Amen. There, um, there is this organization that I worked with once. I've worked in, um, image consulting, I've worked in branding in general for corporate branding as well as with individuals for their personal branding. And there was this one organization I worked with that had a really bad reputation. They had some really awful things going on in their organization. And my job was to go in and help this organization to come up, to come up higher with everything across the board, the way they treated their customers, the way that they were perceived just to be clean and to take it up a notch. And really they needed to go up several notches in professionalism and just being the best that they could be. Well, with this particular organization, I went in and I worked my magic. I tried. My magic of the Lord, that is, not anything negative. But I went in and I did what I could. I laid out the principles for them. I laid out these best practices that have been proven to work because they do work when they are worked properly. However, this organization was stuck in a mindset of poverty. They didn't want to change their ways. They didn't want to stop being rude to their customers. They didn't want to clean up the way they looked physically. They didn't want to take their level of professionalism to another level. So no matter how much I went in, no matter how many days I worked with them over and over and over again, they would um, change for just a little bit slightly, but then they would slide right back to their poverty mentality. They would slide right back to their negative reputation, right back to their negative habits because they were stuck in that poverty mentality. They chose not to change, so they, in the end, could not see any change. And unfortunately now, some years later, they are still in the same boat. I went in and I did all that I could for them. I gave them the principles. I gave them the coaching. I gave them the transformation. But you can transform someone on the outside. But if it doesn't truly happen on the inside, if it doesn't truly happen with the leadership, they're going to revert back to that poverty mentality. It's the same thing they say when people win the lottery who have been poor for a really long time. Their money is gone in a matter of years, a couple of years, because they're still stuck in that poverty mentality. On the flip side, I've worked with organizations who were literally in poverty. They didn't have anything. Organizations and individuals, they didn't have anything, but I was able to work with them to change their mindset, to show them the end from the beginning. This is where you're at right now, but this is where you're going. So if we can change your mindset, if we can get you up to that place where you release the poverty mentality, then we're going to remake your life and we're going to transform your business, transform you as an individual into being that royalty that you were called to be. I don't care if you don't have much money. I've worked with individuals and designed them over, remade them over on a Dollar Tree budget. I've worked with organizations who had a budget of under $500 to really uh, do some things. Money's not always the biggest factor. It has to take place in your mindset. That's where it all begins, it's in your mindset. You have to get that shift going in your mindset in order to release that poverty mentality and receive the royal mentality. Again, I'm not saying that everyone's going to the palace because God hasn't called us all to be millionaires or to, um, to be entrepreneurs. Not everyone's called to that destination, but everyone in the body of Christ is called to a level of distinction. God wants you to do the best that you can with what you have available. And in order for you to do that, in order for you to walk strongly in this new season, you're going to have to release that poverty mentality and say, yes, God, I want to come up higher. Even in things concerning God, 
you need to release the poverty mentality of thinking, okay, God, well, I pray and you don't answer, or I just pray once a week and that's enough. That's poverty because it's less than. That's poverty because it's lacking. You need to increase your expectation of God. Increase your hunger and your thirst for God. Increase your relationship with God so that there's nothing lacking, nothing missing, nothing broken. You're giving him your all. You're coming up higher to that higher level, which he's called each and every one of us to. Amen. So that's the word of the Lord to you today. Remove and release the poverty mentality. See the riches that I have already prepared for you because I do see the end from the beginning and you need to start seeing it so that you can walk it out and be prepared so that you will stay there. When you get there, you will fit right in. Amen. Glory to God. Well, I'm going to pray for you today and then um, we're, just, we're just going to wrap. We're going to wrap right here, right after I pray for you. So, Father, I thank you, Lord. Father, I thank you that you are an awesome God. I thank you that you are a king. You are not a peasant because you are a king, Lord. We are king's children. Thank you for that, Father. Thank you for that, Lord Jesus. Mm. Thank you, Lord God. Lord, I pray, Father. Ah, thank you, Lord. I pray, Father, for your son and your daughter watching, and I release your kingship to them right now. Lord, cause your people to rise up, Lord, to remove the poverty mentality, oh Lord Jesus, and to re realize that they are a king. Yes, daughter, you are a queen. Yes, son, you are a king, but we are all kings because we are all under the kingship of the Lord Jesus Christ. So cause your people, Lord God, to realize the royalty, the status that you have called them to. Cause them to remove the poverty mindset. Cause them to remove, Father God, the poverty from their lives in every area, Father, whether it's mentally, physically, spiritually, emotionally, or financially, Father. Yes, Lord God. Yes, Lord God, touch them where they're at right now. I pray, Lord God, that they will catch this word and that they will come to you directly, Lord God, for more directions, Lord God, for more instructions, Lord God, and to walk out their royalty, which you're calling them to in this new season, whatever it may be, to walk in the royalty of being a mother, to walk in the royalty of being a wife, to walk in the royalty of being a husband, to walk in the royalty of entrepreneurship, to walk in the royalty of ministry, to walk in the royalty, Lord God, of even receiving their prayer language. I hear the Lord saying, even right now, there are those of you who are wanting to receive your prayer language and you have to stop believing for the little bit or stop believing that it's not for you because it is for you. So take off that poverty mentality of thinking that you're never going to have enough or that you're lacking for the Lord wants to give you the full measure of his spirit. And as you begin to tap into what God is giving you, as you begin to tap into it and see that the flow is for you because God is the source then you'll begin to flow and move freely in Jesus name. So Father, I thank you for that. Lord, I thank you for your people, my brothers and my sisters, Lord, and you bless them, Father, in Jesus name. Amen. Amen. Well, beloved, I pray that this has been a blessing to you today. I pray that you will take this word and take it back to the Lord and say, God, was this for me today? And if so, Lord, what part of this was for me? What do you want me to do with it? And even go back and read through Esther 1 verses 1 through 8 and let the Lord speak to you. Let him minister to you directly about what he's saying to you today as you begin to prepare. Amen. Well, God bless you. I love you. God loves you more. Thank you for tuning in and I'll see you again on Sunday. Bye-bye for now.